Hello, my soccer universe. I just decorated my room for the Champions League final. We have Liverpool and Spurs hanging back there in white and the red as they will be playing, but this will not be my preview video. I thought since it's the Champions League final and this is the big occasion, I, and I haven't done many top 10 videos in a, since New Year's, exactly zero. I give you two top 10 videos. Um, and this first one is now very personal to me. What have been my uh, favorite Champions League finals? The ones that I can remember and this go back for the entirety of the since the Champions League exists. I'm gonna do it a little bit differently at first. I will not do 10 to 3, then give honorable mentions, then uh, 10 to 4, and then honorable mentions, then the top 3. I will actually start with the honorable mentions because there is a certain theme to it that I wanna uh, adhere to wearing my Juventus Champions League jacket, fittingly, which um, if I don't have a fitting jersey, you will see me in this jacket. And with that, let's go to the honorable mentions. So, for the honorable mentions, I'm wearing my 98-2000 uh, Real Madrid home kit uh, for a specific reason that we will see. As I said, I'm not a big Real Madrid fan anymore, but this is one of my absolute favorite jerseys to have. Uh, just the way it looks, I think the colors are very nice. Everything. Uh, and I'm gonna go chronologically uh, through these, just for the simple reason I c that I... I, don't want, I didn't want to rank them anymore. And I'm starting out actually with the first uh, Champions League slash European Cup final that I remember. That's Milan Benfica 1-0. I don't remember much. I remember Rijkaard scoring and I've seen Rijkaard scoring a lot, but I don't remember much. I remember that on the day of the final, I was visiting a friend who was a huge soccer fan. At that time, I was not quite yet. The World Cup 1990 needed to happen. This was kind of the first soccer memory that I have. Um, for that reason, I remember seeing him and everyone was talking Milan, 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 we want Milan to win. And yeah, so I watched a little bit, I remember that Milan won and kind of because of my friend, all of my friends were Milan fans, yeah, this is how I ended up a Milan fan as well. So this game is kind of the first real club game that I saw, it was Milan, they were the winners, so I'm a Milan fan ever since. But it's not a Champions League final. Uh, which also goes for the second one on the list. Uh, this is the... Yeah, I remember the 91 final quite well because I watched the full thing. Uh, but the 92 final between Barcelona and Sampdoria, this was not yet Champions League. This was um, the mo the... A competition format was already in place, but it was not called the Champions League yet. So for me, that's why it doesn't qualify as well. I remember that final as being a very tight affair. Uh, and when you look highlights, I mean, Sampdoria could have won that one too. It was a weird jersey matchup. Uh, Sampdoria in their away jerseys, Barcelona in their orange away jerseys, which they've never worn. But it became this big thing that Barcelona won for the first time. I remember that. I remember the great freak by Kuman. Then we go all the way to 2000. So there are a lot of the finals that are just skipping over. Not all of them make it to my countdown, but many will. Um, 2000 didn't make the countdown because I think the final itself was not that great, but I was quite invested this time in Real Madrid. Uh, that's why I'm wearing it. Why was I invested? Because I was watching first in that season, 99-2000. This is the group game, Bayern Munich against Real Madrid, where Bayern won 4-1. No one thought anything Real Madrid winning. Um, also note the way they said that this is devalued is that they cut it through and this is even worse when we got tickets actually for a semi-final. Unfortunately it was the exact same game but you know we, we didn't really mind. I saw the return leg between Bayern and Real Madrid. That's how they did it. So I was invested. We were having these jerseys especially bought for the semi-final and yeah was great to see that one. So uh, that's it just didn't make the cut because the final was not that great. Although there was a great scene in the final. Uh, I mean, I think I, I, I liked the McManaman goal and I liked the Raul goal. But the Austrian TV said, oh, I just saw something Austrian. There is Lusk fans on tour. Made my day. Just not enough to make the final and also Real Madrid played in the, played in the black jerseys. Which was, I think, the first one that they did, uh, won the Champions League not playing in white. 
Then a file that will for sure not make it because it's not my favorite file. In fact, I want to forget about it. I'm a Milan fan. I have to put it in honorable mentions because it's probably the greatest Champions League final ever, which is of course 2005 Liverpool Milan 3-3. Uh, when I watch highlights, I watch the first three goals and then I flip it off. I have, I remember the great chance by Shevchenko. I remember the 10 minutes of madness. I remember playing cards with my friends during that game uh, with one friend that was not a soccer fan, being quite. Uh, pissed that I that we are not quite focused on the game. I thought at halftime, as everyone, yes, that's it for Milan. I remember the goal by Maldini. I remember the great pass for Kaká onto Crespo. I mean, they have, uh, this is probably one of the best passes you've ever seen. And then the 10 minutes of madness. Liverpool wins in a penalty shootout. Um, Honestly, I'm still not over that one. And now I'm for, I'm uh, leaning Liverpool again, but it took me a long time to embrace Liverpool. This, literally, I want to forget about this final. Um, there's a reason why it's a little bit better. Talk about that in a bit. Um, then, the other final, the, the last honorable mention is the Barcelona-Manchester United in 2009. So 10 years, years ago, where Barcelona... Um, got their treble, this was the Ronaldo Messi final, the only Ronaldo Messi final. Uh, it was super hyped. Um, I was expecting an awesome game and the game didn't really live up. 10 minutes matches and I was better at those scores. And from that moment on, Barcelona had it in the back, but they were not convincing. So for that reason, I remember this final, I remember the season for Barcelona, but the final was not all that great. And so, with that, we can finally get to the top 10. Okay, number 10 is Manchester United versus Chelsea in 2008. It was 1-1 after regulation, it went to overtime, penalties, Manchester United won. Why is this final on the list? Um, I remember it not being psyched about this final at all at first. It was the first English final at that time. I was not that crazy about English teams. Um, but it is an important final for me, for uh, personally, for my journey. Um, first of all, I don't have yet a Manchester United shirt. I know this is something that needs to be rectified. I will do so come maybe next season. Um, so, I was one of those fans that I actually wanted to more or less also forget. I was more for Chelsea in that one, but the Chelsea was already with Abramovich, so I was not really happy about the whole thing. And in the end, uh, I remember when Manchester United won it, I really liked that there was Bobby Charlton um, greeting the players, I think even handing over the trophy, whereas there was just an executive of Chelsea doing the same thing for Chelsea, which didn't have the same weight. Uh, having such a legend as Bobby Charlton there, was actually a good thing to see. Um, but it's not the game itself, which was a messy game. I know that Ronaldo scored, then I think it was Lampard who equalized, Drogba got sent off in overtime, and now it comes to penalty shootout. This is why this is important. Um, this penalty shootout, I didn't think anything special. However, then I think two years later, or three years later, I read Soconomics, a great read, thoroughly can, um, can recommend it. If you want to see a little bit numbers with soccer, great read. Um, and they talk about exactly this penalty shootout. Chelsea has been tipped off. They actually, uh, Avram Grant was the Chelsea coach, he had some connections and they got tipped off about the shootout, about what Van Van der Sar is doing. And they said that uh, Van der Sar is usually, usually diving to the natural corner, meaning if you shoot with your right, you would aim naturally for your left side. And so if you shoot to the right, you have a higher chance of scoring. And then they say something with Ronaldo, which also, they, whatever they said about Ronaldo, it's exactly how it happened. They said, don't move and Jack could save it because of that. Uh, the only one who disregarded it was uh, Michael Balak. Uh, who decided to go by himself uh, and so all the penalties went to one side and Van der Sar thought he had fig figured it out and in the end rewatch it when Anelka takes the decisive penalty all the penalties even the one that Terry missed if Terry wouldn't have slipped Chelsea would, would have wanted uh, that shootout 
even on the Teremis, they all went to the right side of the uh, penalty taker. And so Van der Sar is pointing, 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 pointing. And you can see actually how Anelka thinks he knows what's doing and he does the exactly wrong thing. Van der Sar uh, saves it. He has not figured out what they were uh, told, but he figured out that they knew something. And then it was pure game theory. Uh, this is basically one of the starts of me being really into connecting stats with soccer and game mathematics and game theory. That penalty showed up. I absolutely love it for that. And that's why it's number 10 on my list. Number 9 is Juventus versus Ajax played in Rome. 1-1 one, one after regulation. Again, went to a penalty shootout that Juventus won. Whole thing happened in 96. Okay, why does this one make it? Um, it's wearing for my Juve shirt, although Juve didn't wear uh, the black and white stripes in that one, and I would love to have. This is the other Juve shirt I want to have, that blue shirt. And that's the reason why this final is on the list. I think it was probably the best jersey matchup that I can remember in a Champions League final. Um, you can take me up with that. I like the blue and yellow against the red and white. This was an absolutely gorgeous uh, matchup to watch. It was also the first one where... No, it was not. It was the second one where names were and uh, sponsorships allowed. Um, I will remember that final for the crazy goal that Ravanelli scored with his celebration that Ajax... This was kind of the last real chance at glory for Ajax up until this year. Uh, they made a semi-final before but were then thoroughly outclassed by Juventus. This was really the last time that you could see Ajax could make something, the problem was that Ajax had many injuries and didn't play their first string, couldn't play their first string squad. They still got Juventus to a 1-1. It was a great final, uh, as far as I remember, and Juventus had the better of it for most of the time. But the reason why this is on there is, I think this was the best jersey matchup, and those Juve shirts, uh, if you ask me about the best Champions League winning jersey, there's another top 10. Uh, just without having thought too much, I think this is the jersey that I like best. I just find those absolutely gorgeous and I wonder why Juventus doesn't use this design more often. So for that, this is my number 9. Number 8. AC Milan against Juventus. Nil-nil. In a penalty shootout, Milan won. This was in 2003 in Manchester. Why did this final make it? I'm a Milan fan. I'm wearing here my 2003 uh, Milan third jersey. They were actually wearing in the final their white jersey. This is one that I really would like to have. And I still regret that I think five years ago or six years ago I had the uh, classic football shirts. They had the Milan jersey for that final. I would have loved to have it. I think it was in 300 pounds or something like that. Um, you will see, since this is my personal top 10, you will see a lot of Milan shirts, uh, Milan, not only Milan shirts, but Milan finals um, on this list, um, especially one to one. Uh, simply, this is on, on, on the list because at that moment, I didn't think that Milan has ever a chance again. They were not the dominant team in Europe anymore, except at this season they actually were. They came a little bit out of nowhere. I know they beat Bayern, they beat Real Madrid. Uh, they were actually quite good, but then in the knockout stage, they had a tough game against Ajax. They beat Inter in the semi-final, and then they had to play Juve. And Juve actually did the big thing. They eliminated Barcelona, who really needed to win this Champions League. They also eliminated Real Madrid in an absolute dazzling display by uh, Pavel Nedved. But then in the end, they uh, play Milan. And when it's Milan against Juventus, in Serie A, it's Juventus that wins. In um, the Champions League, it's Milan that wins. I also thought that for at last about 60 minutes, it was not a bad game. It was quite open. Milan, and especially Milan having the better of the game. Uh, it was only then that um, Juventus came in. Juventus was more defending. Milan definitely was more on, on the attack. I know everyone will say the all-Italian final is of course a 0-0 and I hated that fact because I really thought the game was not that bad and Shevchenko, yes, scored, was unfortunately offside. There could have been something. Uh, then it went to a penalty shootout, uh, one of the crazier ones that you will see. Uh, I think there were five consecutive misses at one point, which made me really, really nervous. Uh, 
Padia, Shevchenko put the decisive one in. Dida was off the line and I guess this is where then Justice came in because we talk about 2005 uh, final when I think it was Dudek who uh, did all this and then um, completely derailed Milan with that. Well, Dida did seem something similar with, uh, Juvent uh, with Juventus. I was, this was the last one before I went to America. I was so happy. I really could not believe it. Um, of all the fouls that Milan won, I want to say this is where I had the most unbridled joy for it. Um, and that it was against Juventus made it even sweeter. But still only number eight on my list. But I remember that one more fondly than most people probably will. But hey, I'm a Milan fan. Number seven is Chelsea versus Bayern. 1-1 one, one after regulation, it went to a penalty shooter that Chelsea won. Happened in 2012 and was played in Munich. Should be obvious why this one is on, on the list. Bayern Munich losing a final at home in most dramatic fashion. A final that they thoroughly dominated. I had the feeling Chelsea only needed to hang on. And they tried and tried and tried until Müller scores, I think in the 82nd or 83rd, the goal that I thought won it for Bayern. Um, I was a little bit gutted. Um, my wife and I, we were going to the Champions Cup, Audi Cup, not in 2012, but 2011 in Munich, where there was Bayern, Barcelona, Milan, and I think Internacional Porto Alegre uh, were playing there. I'm sorry, I'm... Pollen. Uh, and I said it's all Bayern against Barcelona in this one. Uh, and then Barcelona doesn't make it to the final because Chelsea asked them probably fairly so, but it was a little bit lucky as well. This was one of those where Messi seemed suddenly human again. But I knew in Munich against Chelsea, a Chelsea team that should have been eliminated by Napoli already. Um, but hey, they got a new coach in between and then, uh, cru not cruise, but you know, they made it to the final, but I knew that Bayern is the better team. And then with the first corner kick in the 87th minute from that one, Drogba scores. Then Bayern gets a penalty in extra time. Robin misses and then goes to penalties. Uh, where, I mean, that penalty shootout, I saw it from a uh, play, uh, a video from the Bayern curve. It's absolutely crazy. Absolutely crazy. Uh, Chelsea has the first miss and then the, I think it was the last two Bayern players that missed. And Schweinsteigers went onto the post to hand basically a trophy to Drogba who slams it home. Bayern was destroyed. The Bayern players, if you read uh, what was happening after Euro 2012, Jürgen Löw really needed to put up the Bayern players. They got their revenge, but I think this game almost would have destroyed this team. They made it to the final the next year uh, in typical Bavarian fashion, but this is one of the biggest blows that Bayern ever received. Just for poor Schadenfreude. And, you know, I discovered I'm still a little bit of a Chelsea fan. So, hey, there you go. And that's why it's on my number seven. Number six is Real Madrid against Bayer Leverkusen. Uh, played in Glasgow uh, in 2002. The score ended 2-1 for Real Madrid. On one side, it should be obvious why this one is on there. I'm wearing my Real Madrid jersey from that season. You have the centenary patch right here. Um, this was the centenary season of Real Madrid. They're already losing out on the a championship. And I think they lost also out in the, on the cup final on home soil. So it was actually do or die for the true Galactico team, if you want to say it that way. Um, but... It's not only on there because Zidane scored probably one of the best goals, if not the best goal. And I think it's only Gareth Bale's goal in last year's final, which probably should have been an honorable mention. Um, those two are the best goals in the Champions League final ever scored. Number three, I give to Edel Piero in 97, actually. Watch it. Absolute stunning goal. Uh, that alone would put it in there, but it was Actually, a really good game. Uh, Real Madrid taking early lead. Leverkusen equalizing. Then Real Madrid getting this wonderful goal from Zidane in the second half. An onslaught of uh, Leverkusen. Who, uh, in the end, Real Madrid hangs barely on to make it. Uh, but they win the Champions League for the ninth time. And then a celebration started. And I was in Madrid. 
at that point. So uh, that's why it's, that's another reason why it's number seven, uh, six on this list. I was there at the celebrations. I remember we watched the game in our hotel room. Uh, my brother, of course, is a Barcelona fan, but you know, we were in Madrid. We wanted to feel the atmosphere there. He was uh, actually um, having an exchange here in Spain at that time. Um, and we went then directly to the Cibeles. Uh, to see the celebrations. Uh, I remember just how quickly the streets got crowded and all the traffic. I mean, you could see the last few cars, yeah, away with us, away with us, because now the people take over. And we were actually for quite a while there and until they started to shoot firecrackers, which was not that fun anymore. But then we found some um, Spaniards who invited us for uh, dinner or whatever very late. So that was nice. And then the next day, we actually watched in the Bernabeu the uh, team coming back with the trophy, that was the only time I saw Zidane uh, running on the stage. They had this all prepared, huge stages where all the trophies were shown and they put, pulled out the player from all of the big um, names. I think Di Stefano was there, Hento was there, I want to say even Pushkas. I mean, it was absolutely amazing. It was free. You just could go, could go in there and we watched the entire thing. It was absolutely amazing. Um, that's why it's definitely one of my favorites. I think the game was good. Uh, why is it not because Leverkusen was in there and Leverkusen, who is Leverkusen? Uh, but yeah, it was a really uh, great game, great memories and yeah, and for that reason it's number six. Number five, Manchester United, Bayern Munich, 2-1 played in Barcelona in 99. Again, I don't have a Manchester United shirt. For all the remaining finals I will have a proper shirt. But yeah. Um, that game is on there for the simple ending. And I was thinking, what's the worst loss? The penalty shootout loss to Chelsea on home soil or the loss to Manchester United where they lost the game in stoppage time? Two goals in stoppage time. I think that one is stoppage time because you had the hands on the trophy. You just needed to survive three minutes. Uh, which is not the case for the other game, and that's why I decided this is more. And you know, um, there's a lot of Schadenfreude in here. It's really because Bayern lost this one in such heartbreaking fashion, less for Bar less for Manchester United. I remember this final. It should have been, by all accounts, in my uh, from what I can say, this final should not have been uh, Bayern against United. It should have been Juventus against Kiev. Kiev played an enormously gorgeous game against Bayern in the semi-final. But somehow Bayern managed a 3-3 and then yeah, they win 1-0. And I even remember that when they had the semi-finals, uh, Austrian television was first showing the Bayern against Kiev game, which was so boring and they uh, always flipped over. You went to score one, you went to score the second. Oh, and now Manchester United, and then they flipped over, I think, when it was 2-2 uh, or something like that. I mean, this was one of the great comebacks of many matches that they just fought for it. I still think that Juventus was the better team back then, and as was Kiev. So I was already a little bit... Uh, and then the game was not great. This was an absolutely dreadful game. Uh, and I remember, yeah, Basel scored early. Bayern fans, I mean, uh, Bayern hit the bar... Uh, it should have been done and dusted at that point. I mean, Manchester was not showing up. And I remember saying to my brother, well, they say this is the final rich against super rich, the two, two of the biggest teams ever, one of the greatest fouls ever. And it's just a shit game. Uh, sorry for the profanity. But that's how I felt. And we were, I can say, yeah, fortunately, no one will remember the final. And then stoppage time comes. And... I got super happy. <laughs> I've rarely been so excited for uh, Manchester United Turner uh, comeback or at any Champions League final. This was impossible. You have never seen anything like that. Everyone still talks about this final. The final was a crap game, absolutely crap game. But it has the most famous endings of them all. And all you need to see is the endings. And maybe the Basla go, or maybe when Mateus goes out and Basla goes out. I still feel for Sami Kufu, to be honest, because he literally did not deserve it. Uh, but I was actually happy that United won because Bayern had horrible jerseys in that one. Yeah, that ending puts it in the top five for me. 
and only that ending and because it's Bayern losing so badly and I remember a friend of mine saying afterwards even if Bayern wins 20 more Champions League this one is the one that they will always we will always refer to this is the greatest thing ever happening for that reason number five on the list number four AC Milan against Liverpool Football Club 2-1 played in Athens in 2007 the big revenge um, that final made my just kept off a wonderful year for me um, where shall I start first of all I bought this shirt on sale and I said it in my video before and I still can't believe it. I bought this away shirt on sale before the quarterfinal between Milan and Bayern because no one really thought that Milan is going to do anything I even thought that Bayern is the better team in the quarterfinal now Milan showed them Milan then destroyed Manchester United, who just had destroyed Roma also. And I actually think it's a great shirt, honestly. I really love this. I mean, I never was that much into this uh, World Cup 2006 design, but Milan, I think, made it the finest shirt out of it, and it's a memorable shirt. That they played a final against Liverpool made me nervous, because, you know, it was just two years before. I was out for blood. I needed Milan to win this one. And yeah, this was the Milan team that actually, thanks to this match fixing, initially wouldn't have made it to the Champions League then. They got points deduction, still made in fourth place, had to play qualification, went in. But this was a super veteran team. I remember watching this in my room in Columbia, South Carolina. I was just writing my PhD. Um, and with a Bulgarian friend, and I remember I was be I was super nervous. I was watching this game, and in Sagi and Liverpool was better. It was exactly the opposite. If Milan would have won in two thousand five and Liverpool in two thousand seven, I think this would have been the fairer re result, and probably could live with that. Uh, absolutely. If Milan wins the three two in two thousand five and then loses uh, one two or whatever in two thousand seven, I would have been disappointed. But I I would have accepted it. I mean, there are Milan losses. Uh, that I accepted in the final. It was just the, the matter of which I, I never thought that Milan deserved to lose that final in 2005. Um, but yeah, uh, Milan won that final. Two goals by Inzaghi. Liverpool, I think, was the better team for most of the time, but Milan was just clinically, and they had Kaká, who was the best player. The last Ballon d'Or winner, not to be called um, Ronaldo Messi for a long time until we finally have now Luka Modric breaking that monopoly or duopoly, I should say. Uh, Maldini lifting a trophy, I think he should have retired there and then, uh, on Oslo at latest when they won the um, World Cup then, uh, based on that triumph. But it was just wonderful. Um, I was maybe, I was jubilant, I watched, I rewatched this game three times on the same day, I just had to watch it, rewatch it, rewatch re it. And uh, I was crying when Maldini scored it. I remember when Inzaghi made the second goal, I had this shirt in my closet. Because, uh, no, just hanging there. Uh, because I said, yeah, I'm from Milan, but I'm not wearing this. I was celebrating after this argument, the second goal, and Liverpool puts it the other one, and I'm, no! I was so nervous then, but they made it. The revenge was dealt. It was not... I'm still not over the 2005, but at least it makes me feel better. Milan won. At least once against, uh, against Liverpool, and that's fine. So... I remember that this was in my finishing stages of my PhD. Uh, it was the last final I watched in Columbia, South Carolina on my own TV. Uh, there was a huge hype around it. They were even discussing it on ESPN. They showed it, I think, on ESPN. So for that reason, yeah, definitely number four. It was one of the most satisfying finals for sure. And it fit perfectly into a season where then in the end even Lusk gets promoted. So very nice very happy with that file i'm very happy to have this shirt um just great and for that it's number four so there are three that i have better memories with what will that be number three is ajax against milan it was a one nil win it was played in vienna in 95. why is this final on the list it was a crappy game it really was i was at that game I have the shirt from that game with results for the whole and I have the tickets. This is my ticket and my brother's ticket. We were at that game and simply for that, I this has to be on the list. 
up there. It was the first time, and so far the only time I saw a Champions League final. It was a great experience. Um, it was a little bit more nervy than I needed it to be. Because we had those tickets. They were hanging near the kitchen in our house. And we had this perfectly planned. My parents gave me and my brother, who went to the game with my aunt and my father, uh, gave us the day of school. We were having lunch. And then we said, yeah, we go to Vienna. We take in the atmosphere. Um, you know, really enjoy our day out there. No, there was no enjoyment because my sister, who was four years at the time, took those tickets and hid them somewhere. And we were looking for them everywhere. We were taking down furniture three, four hours looking for the f tickets. I mean, we were actually in, we were about to get in the car and I'm asking my father, do you have the tickets? No. I thought you have them. No, I don't have them. Okay, let's get them. And then we cannot find them. Absolute panic. We were, I was in tears almost. Uh, we were calling, no one of course picking up because of the Champions League final, what shall we do? We have tickets, we cannot get there! And then my aunt opens the little suitcase that she had for kindergarten and finds the tickets in there and it was still on time. I think we left at 5 o'clock, the game was played at 8.30, we arrived there. Um, the game was at 8.30, I think we arrived... When did we leave? 6 30 uh, 6 or 6 30 i mean it was late but we made it we actually um i want to say we, we we arrived 7 30 in vienna uh, we parked and then we had to go with uh underground and so on uh through all of vienna but in the end it worked out we were when the game started before the game started we were in the stadium i remember um people with hulit hair uh, I remember the huge scene that they made with like this uh, arches of balloons. It was just great. And the Milan fans to my left, the Ajax fans to my right, making a whole lot of noise. I didn't expect much of that game, to, to be honest. I honestly thought Milan did not deserve uh, getting into this game uh, because they did not play all, all the way. I actually thought I should play, it should be Ajax against PSG. They were actually better. So I was kind of neutral, although I had my I had a wristband with Milan. Patrick Kleiber scores. I still can remember this was the first time I saw the Milan defense, how great they played in the back. But Milan was without Savicevic and they had no teeth on the front. And so they this was their best game against Ajax. They played already in a group stage where Ajax twice completely dominated them. But there you could see that the young Ajax team was a little bit nervous. Of course, Frank Reichert, who's just scored who scored the goal in Vienna. For Milan 1995 years later, he gives the assist to Patrick Kluivert. 1-0 Ajax. Ajax wins the Champions League. For the last time so far, I was there. And for that, just this memory that I've been in the Champions League final. I remember going home because uh, we left after the trophy was hand, handed out. My father always wants to leave quickly, but we said we need to watch the trophy. Uh, handed out. And the, we were basically traveling home with the Milan fans, and I can always say, Savicevic, Savicevic, Savicevic. And then it was a long time until Milan made it to the final. Until eight years without Milan in the final. At that point, they had made three consecutive ones. So, very big personal memory, and for that, this is number three. Uh, the other two games that are in there are just because they were great games, and it was all fitting. Number two is Barcelona Manchester United 3 1 played at Wembley in 2011. Wearing, of course, this Barcelona jersey is my only other Champions League winning jersey that I own. Um, this probably was the best, together with number one, performance of a winning team in a Champions League final. A super complete performance dominating Manchester United, uh, who don't know how they got their goal. And I think the scoreline does not reflect how dominant Barcelona was. Pep Guardiola said after, two, after the final, I needed a final that we win and we dominate. And this was the final. Uh, absolute stunning performance. I thought when Manchester United scored, this was more or less their only chance in the entire game. Pedro got the um, got the first goal. Uh, Rooney equalized at halftime, and then Barcelona took over Messi and Villa scoring, and it could have been even bigger. There, yeah, absolutely no chance for Manchester United. It was also good that um, 
I like, like the jersey matchup. This was these Barca jer jerseys with the red shorts, which I don't necessarily like. But matches United with uh, white with black and red shoulders was a really uh, nice jersey matchup, I have to say. Uh, I like those Manchester United away uh, jerseys. But Manchester United never got a foot on the field. Um, it's also the only Champions League final that I watched at noon, because I was in California at the time, about to get married. Uh, so I have this good memory of that time associated with that as well. I was watching this uh, in my uh, wife's then apartment in California. And I remember just having a great day. We went afterwards. I pulled on my old Barcelona jersey, went to the beach. It was just a joy. Uh, very happy times. And probably the last time that I was really, really happy with the Champions League winner. I was happy about Chelsea about a year later. But more out of emotions against Bayern, not because I really wanted the team to win. Uh, so yeah, for that reason, that one also sticks out. But this was a really great team. It was maybe not a great final because the teams were so evenly matched, but because there was a huge, huge, huge team performance there. Absolute dominant, probably... It's probably up there, if not the best team that, that I've seen perform. But there's always number one, which provides the flip side. So, number one and my absolute favorite final of all time is Milan against Barcelona 4-0 in 1994. Milan wore something similar. Of course, they did not wear Adidas. They had a similar color to this. Um, you could not get this uh, jersey. It was a special. They were wearing Lotto jerseys uh, back then. This was a special edition because uh, the regular uh, away jerseys uh, had, I think, a black and red band here. But they wanted to get this clean look that they won the first cup in and all. The Cups under Berlusconi so far, and they didn't wear it in the 93 final before against Marseille, where they were playing in a black and red. So you couldn't get, you still cannot get this jersey uh, on a uh, re regular ways. I mean, this is the closest thing that you can get to that. That final is one of the most unbelievable performances I've ever seen in soccer, period. Uh, and you need to know the story on the front. When Capella took over, the first season under Fabio Capella in 91-92, Milan was the most exciting team in Europe. They were banned from Europe though, so they couldn't play in a UEFA Cup. They would have won that one. But then, um, you know, the Dutchman got out from Boston, got, uh, got more and more injured, Hewlett was drifting away. And the team became more defensive. They still should have won the 93 champ Champions League. I mean, they were huge favorites. Uh, losing that final is the other one that really, really hurts. And then by 93, 94, Milan was not a great team anymore. They were a very defensive team. I mean, look at the record back then in the league. They won the league. But I think they scored in 34 games. They th scored about 40 goals and gave up only 10. Something like a 1-0 team. Uh, and in the Champions League, a similarly messy performance. I think that in the group stage, only two, uh, two wins and four draws um, in there. Then the semi-final at home against Monaco, of all... T no, was it Monaco? I think it was... I want to say it was Monaco. Unbelievably, it was Monaco. Um, they beat them 3-0. Uh, they were huge favorites. And this was a semi-final where only the group winners... This was a one-time format. The group winners had a one. It was a one-legged semi-final where the group winners had home advantage. It was Milan against um, Monaco. Pretty sure about that. And Barcelona against uh, Porto. And both games ended three 0 But before the final, Baresi and Costa Curta, the heart of the Milan defense was uh, suspended for a. Uh, for the second or third yellow card, I thought I, I know exactly how, how, how it was. In addition, I mean, there was Van Basten was injured and he was the big star for Milan. Uh, he didn't play a role in there. You didn't know who was playing for Milan. We knew that Milan is going to be defensive, but against this Barcelona team, Johan Cruyff's dream team, 
with Ronald, uh, Romario and Ristos Deutschka from front, a team that was absolutely uh, steamrolling the opposition. One of the most exciting teams to watch uh, at that time. And it was clear. Uh, Milan is going to have a huge task at hand. Uh, and it got even more so that, you know, uh, Johan Cruyff was so sure of victory that he kind of always was a little bit dismissive to Milan. We will see the true style of uh, the year 2000, because we were still in 94, will be played in that final. Um, and, you know, Milan is just an ordinary, very defensive team. So we play good soccer. And then Milan's team rolls this team with a secondary string squad. Maldini, for the first time, I think, had to, uh, in a long time at least, if not ever, had to play in the central defense. They took apart this great Barcelona attack of Stoichkov and Romario. This was the best attack in Europe. Barcelona never got a foot on the field. And Massaro fully deservedly scores two goals to make it a half time. Then Savicevic, with an absolute moment of brilliance, makes it 3 0 right after the half. Marcel Desailly uh, adds a fourth, and it should have been more. Uh, Barcelona was not on the field. So, simply for that, I, after the game, I got all the newspapers, I cut this out, put this on my wall, and it was hanging there for years. Uh, it was, this was so great to see. I was absolutely excited. I still can get very excited talking about this final. For me, this is the Champions League final, and unfortunately, you only see grainy footage now. Um, one of the most complete team performances uh, where Marcel Desailly, uh, Demetrio Albertini absolutely took over midfield, where Savicevic is making passes um, that are just deadly, and you have with Massaro, a striker who is on form. Savicevic, of course, would have played for Yugoslavia, who were banned, so for him, this was the World Cup final. Uh, because he had no chance to play in the World Cup. But what made it even sweeter is some sibling rivalry. This was the file between me and my brother Florian. My brother Florian, the huge Barcelona fan, me, the huge Milan fan. And I remember we were watching it together, and you know, I feel uneasy. I, I, I don't like being, but of course, I was the winner. I mean, rarely ever has Barcelona lost to Milan ever since. I remember once in the group stage in two, thousand uh, they played Milan where they lost at home but since then I think it was always when Barcelona and Milan were playing it was always Barcelona getting the upper hand and I've conceded that um, but back then Milan showed that they're the better team absolute tactical masterclass by Capello using the fuel that Cruyff put on the fire and use it for something great one of the most complete performances and you can see when they're celebrating. Capello doesn't want to celebrate, he's just having it there and everyone around him is going, ah, absolutely gorgeous. I put this performance over the Barcelona performance in 2011 for one simple reason. What we saw in 2011 was almost what you would expect. This performance was as complete as this Barcelona performance 2011, but it was not expected at all. And Capello said afterwards, we know now what the style will be for the year 2000. And he was right. Dominating defensive midfield. Uh, and as I said, I can talk ages about this final, but I'll keep it short because the video is going to be long. So this is my absolute favorite, favorite final still to this day. Well, it was a long video. Let me know what are your favorite finals for the Champions League. As I said, this is very personal to me. There's a lot of Milan coloration. I am sure that in most top 10 lists, there will be the 2005 final that I want to forget in there. It just cannot make it in there. Uh, there was none of the more recent finals. I was thinking of the 2018 because of Bale's goal. But, you know, in the end, I was so tired of Real Madrid winning, so I couldn't put it in there. Anyway, give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like this. And I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there. I really hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, here are some videos and playlists that might be of interest to you too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel as it will give you all the updates on my channel, all things My Soccer Universe. And with that, I want to wish you a wonderful day.